Hey, good morning. Once again, I'm right back with you. How's everybody doing on this beautiful Friday morning? Well, actually, Saturday, I'm sorry. It's Saturday morning. A little gloomy and cold here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Um, coming to you today out of the book of Matthew concerning the uh, birth of Jesus Christ. Okay? Uh, see if we can um, drop, drop a uh, couple of nuggets on you, a little wisdom and some info. And... Um, Hopefully it'll give you some understanding about some stuff. It's going to reach, you know, reach you where you're at. Um, hope, hopefully this will be some words of inspiration for somebody. Um, <clears throat> okay, we're going to start with uh, Matthew, <clears throat> first chapter. Um, first chapter, 18th verse. Okay, this is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace. He had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All that took place to fulfill what the Lord said, what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife, but he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son. And he gave him the name Jesus. Okay. Uh, Joseph was obedient. To do what the, the spirit of the Lord through the angel told him to do. Was to give the name Jesus to the son that was born. To the child that was born of Mary. Okay. Now if that was in this day and time. The men of this day. They would have got rid of that woman. You understand what I'm saying? You ain't telling me you done got pregnant by some, you know, how the heck that gonna happen? You done got pregnant and you done been sleeping with some man and all this kind of stuff. But let me, let me, I'm just, it's a point I'm trying to make here. Okay, check this out. Joseph was promised Mary's hand in marriage. Okay, that was a pledge equals a promise equals a guarantee to be sworn Joseph's wife. Okay? If you're sworn, back in those days, if you sworn to be with somebody, there's no, you know, you keeping yourself sanctified, a virgin till you meet your husband. Matter of fact, a perfect example, uh, while I was on contract over in Kuwait, now the Arab countries, they, they still live according to some of the Old Testament doctrine in versus their culture. Okay, now the women, they all keep their heads covered and stuff like that. The family members, um, we as a foreigner, if they was to mess with like an American or something like that and their family found out about it, they would be ostracized to the point to where they, they have honor killings over there in the Arab countries because they try to keep their bloodline pure they still believe in incest and uh, they sleep with the you know get married to their cousins and they marry in they marry money into money okay now this is the way the um, the honor killings work okay now if uh, a female of that family ends up defiling herself with someone out of her bloodline it, it it it's a uh, it's considered dishonor a uh, disgrace to their family that that uh that woman 
is taken out into the desert by the male, the men of the family. Everyone from her brother, uncle, dad, grandfather, any male in her family, they all take her out to the desert. They rape her and they kill her. Okay? Now this works different ways. Okay, now if she's promised to be married to someone, this is the way it works if she's she's supposed to keep herself a virgin. Okay, now when she's getting married, they promise to someone, they get married. Okay, um, immediately after they're married, they go to the hotel room. There's two witnesses from each side of the family. On the, the bride side and the groom side. There's two witnesses. They go to consummate or consume their marriage. Okay, the witnesses are supposed to witness if she remained a virgin by witnessing the blood of a virgin okay by her not having sex she's supposed to bleed or you know show the signs of a virgin that she has not been penetrated okay um, if this is the fact the marriage consumes a husband stays with her and they you know, go forward in marriage Okay, now, if the witnesses do not witness any blood, that to them is a sign that this woman did not remain faithful or a virgin. Okay, the husband has the legal right, according to their custom, to disown her, which causes disgrace to her family. And that's when the honor killings takes place. Or, the husband has the right to commence with the honor killing okay that's that's just a little history of how things are done in other cultures and they still do it today okay so people that live in America we we got it easy for as laws okay but the only law we supposed to be abiding by is God's laws and we we're not doing a good job of that Okay, but let me let me get back in here. That's that's just, just a little something something, you know, to um, to give you an idea of what's going on in the world around you. Okay, now Joseph, God knew that Joseph was a, a righteous man, so he had already had in mind to to use or pick Joseph to uh, use his bride to be to. Um, impregnate in order so Jesus can be brought about through a woman okay she couldn't he couldn't have been brought about through natural means because he would have been born into sin he had to be born pure a pure bloodline that's why the Holy Spirit deposited itself into Mary okay in a sense if you want to look at it in the spiritual realm she got pregnant it manifested and by a miracle that she got pregnant by the Holy Spirit. In a sense, you can also say that Mary was the very first human that the Holy Spirit dwelled in because Jesus today lives in us. We accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. He resides in us, which is the Holy Spirit, which is God, because it's the Trinity. All three reside into us because the kingdom of God resides in us. Okay? Now, before Joseph and Mary could consummate or consummate, which means to consummate is the transactive verb, which means fertilize. Not in the sense that you think it might mean far as fertilizing the egg to, to create a baby. Okay? Scientists have uh, done research, and I'm going to read this right here about what this says. The, the study is bound, the study which is bound to provoke controversy, showed that the women who were directly exposed to semen were less depressed. The researchers think this is because mood altering hormones in semen are observed through the vagina. They say they ruled out other explanations okay 
I want to make it clear that we are not advocating that people abstain from using condoms, says Gordon Gallup, the, the uh, psychologist at the State of University of New York, who led the team. Clearly, an unwanted pregnancy or a sexually transmitted disease will be more than offset any ad advantageous psychological effects of semen. Okay, now, but what they basically is trying to say that um, the team found that women whose partners were never used, who never used condoms, they basically show the um, signs of always being in a good mood, meaning the semen was an anti-depressant uh, to the to the women versus the women that use condoms and they didn't have contact with the semen with their husbands. They were always in a bad mood, always frustrated. So basically what I'm saying is women, God's natural plan for a marriage for concerning sex, the man's semen fertilizes a woman's body. It's good for her body based on the principle of the institution of what God intended for a man and a woman to be, to re reprocreate, to procreate, to uh, bear children and uh, bear fruit and multiply the correct way according to God's laws, okay? The way He intended it for it to be, okay? Now, by what I'm saying about uh, Mary being the first one to have the Holy Spirit reside in her. Just think about it. You know, Jesus was in her for nine months. So, you know, this is the um, this is the uh, conclusion of how it was going to be. It was just a mere. Um, how can I say this? How can I put this? It was a mere. It was a sight of things to come to where it's supposed to be the sequence of the events that are supposed to take place in order to reach the fulfillment of living a sanctified life, accepting Jesus Christ in your heart, let him living into your temple. Because you got to think about it. When you receive the Holy Spirit, which Mary received the Holy Spirit, which she had the baby, was conceived by the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit cleanses the temple. Okay? The Holy Spirit purifies the temple in order for Jesus, God, and the Holy Spirit, the Father God, to reside in you. If it purifies you, that's the only way God, Jesus, the Trinity, can live inside you, which is the Word. Okay? God is the Word. Jesus is the Word. The Holy Spirit is the uh, anointing that allows you to flow in His Word. Okay, now, in order for that Word to, to live and reside in you, it has to be uh, sanctified, concentrated, uh, purified. Okay, that's what happened with the Virgin Mary. That's why she was able to be the one to uh, be used to have Jesus born through. God uh, brought Himself through to the world through her. Okay, now if you look at it, uh, it also says that um, Jesus, Jesus will. She will give, okay, we're going to go 21, first 21. Let me read this again. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his, he will save his people from their sins. Okay, now you got to think about it. If Jesus was born through Mary, and he's going to save his people, that means his people had to be of his bloodline. Okay? God imported himself in Mary, which became the son through the Holy Spirit, which conceived through Mary. He had to be born of purity to come into the sinful world to be pure as a living sacrifice, as a lamb, in order to die for the sins of his brothers and sisters, his children, his people, because that's who God created. He created man in his image, which they were his people, his bloodline. But you got to think about it, the, the uh, book of Genesis, how Satan slid in there 
through the help with Lilith, but I, I, I'll get to you and let you know a little bit more about that. Adam had two wives. They don't touch on it, but I, I'll give you some information on that. But Adam was deceived. He lost the, the um, dominion over the earth. And that's why Jesus is considered the second Adam. Because he's being born of the pure bloodline, which is God himself, through the Holy Spirit. Okay? Satan can't mess with that. Okay? Now, Jesus' name, which is Emmanuel, which means God with us. Okay? All of these little nuggets in here is telling us that God is with us. God, you know, um, put himself as a child to be born in a human form to reside with us to show us that it can be done to live a perfect life. He did it in a human form. He came down here to wake us up and show us that it can be done. Okay? Now, Jesus, by him coming, and he was a sacrifice, and he came to basically purify his bloodline, which are the the children of God. Okay? He came to save them from their sins. Okay, but you got to think about Joseph. He was a man that was righteous with God. And if it was somebody in his day and time and that happened to, that man would have, you know, put it all on Facebook and uh, would have been on Mari Povich and uh, uh, what's that other cat name? Um, uh, all these old uh, uh, talk shows and stuff, the reality shows that they got going on now trying to make money off this stuff. Okay, but he was a righteous man. That's why God chose those two to do this through because he already knew that Joseph, by him being righteous, that he was going to do what was right. Okay, but he just needed some reassurance. That's why God sent that angel to talk to him and let him know it's going to be okay, man. You know, this is what has to happen. Okay? And I'm pretty sure we're not getting a full story about the conversation. Because if, if we was, I'm pretty sure it went something like this. You know, don't, don't, don't be afraid of you no know, marrying this woman. Because by the Holy Spirit, if she's conceiving the Son of God himself through this woman, she's going to be a purified vessel. So what other woman to have than a purified vessel? Okay? I'm pretty sure it would have read something like that. Okay? All right. But um, you got to think about it. You got Mary was a vessel that God used to sanctify us through our sins. Okay? In order to do that, she had to be purified by the Holy Spirit. Okay, because that's the only way the word's gonna live in you. That's the only way Jesus, the God, God the Father, and the, the Holy Spirit dwells in you. Okay. Now, in conclusion to this, I want you to think about this: how this all played out. God used a virgin because she had the the only way He could come through into this natural world from the spirit world was through a woman. Okay? Now because Satan was cast out of heaven he is working unnatural laws because he's the principalities of the air. He's, you know, he's the God of all this confusion and all this kind of stuff. He's acting in a um, wrongful or uh, uh, an unlawful authority in this earth man has been given dominion over this earth but we are not acting in our rightful dominion okay Adam lost the dominion when he got deceived by Satan okay Jesus came and destroyed all that through his death and bore all our sins went down in hell stole the keys brought them back giving gifts to us okay he left left the Holy Spirit, which is the Comforter, for us to be able to uh, be able to operate as he did and greater things we should do because that's what he told us. Okay? But in order for us to do those things, we have to have 
the Holy Spirit that dwelling within us. And we also have to have the Word in us for that Holy Spirit to operate in. Okay? Now, uh, God had to come through a virgin to be pure, of a pure bloodline. Okay? It couldn't have been through a natural man because he would have been born of sin. Okay? That would have been going backwards according to the laws that he has set up. Okay? The natural laws. It's not the laws of Darwin or uh, the way they look at it, all these scientists and stuff, but it's God's law. You know, they give you an explanation of how and why they think the, mon the sun and the moon is hung up in the skies. But they really don't have an answer. So they're going to give you the best uh, thing that they can come up with. Okay? But what I'm trying to get you to understand is a lot of times when we read these scriptures, there's different stories on top of stories that reach people right where they're at. A lot of people read something and they'll get something out of it, but certain things are unlocked to people. So people can, depending on where they're at in their walk, because it's all about the belief in Jesus, okay? That's what this, this story, this, this scripture is all about, okay? It's about us believing that God came down here in his human form through a virgin, okay? And if you can believe that a virgin got pregnant by a spirit, she didn't have sex or lay down with a natural man, and she got pregnant and had Jesus, which was God himself in the flesh, if you believe that, it's going to cost you your life. And it's coming down to that through these Noah laws. But, you know, I've already talked about that. Just go check out that video about that stuff. Okay, but um, that's what it's boiling down to. The belief in a virgin being pregnant through the Holy Spirit, which Jesus came through her to operate through his life, the miracles and stuff that he did, trying to show us that this is the way we supposed to live. This is the way we supposed to conduct ourselves concerning the sick, people that are demon possessed, and all this type of stuff. The type of miracles that's supposed to follow the type of gospel. Okay. Now, I know I come on here and it sounds like I'm bashing these pastors or the way they teach. But we got to hold people accountable according to the word of God. Okay? I understand that because people are going to be misled because they don't study for themselves. The main part of me coming on and trying to share these things is trying to get you as a body of Christ, as brothers and sisters, to go study so you know these things for yourself. You now, I post a lot of stuff. They give you the opportunity to look at it so you know this type of stuff is out there. But if you don't apply yourself, you're just going to believe what somebody tell you. Then Jesus is going to come like a thief in the night. If you ain't prepared, it's a done deal. You know, game over. Okay? Now, I just want to leave you with that. But um, like I say, uh, it's the belief in Jesus Christ that he came down here. He was born of a virgin. That he died for our sins. And the only way that we can get through to God is through him and if if you um, just go through and meditate on the scripture it'll start revealing itself to you because that's basically what it boils down to you know what I mean because it played out in that scripture just like it plays out in us you know because basically just like the the the, um, the title of this message is going to be men get pregnant too because the Holy Spirit resides in me. It pregnates me with the word. But I have to apply myself and put that word in me. Okay? Because the Holy Spirit, Jesus the Son, God the Father, which is the kingdom of God, dwells within you, but it cannot operate without no word. You got to get that word inside you. Study. Study. Get a relationship with him. Okay? Get a get a relationship with him. It's, it's real important. It's very imperative that we as believers do that because that's what it's going to take to withstand the stuff that's getting ready to come down. That's the only way we're going to make it. Because it, it in the book of Revelation, it said even the most elect, these are God's people that are going to be deceived. 
And if you ain't got this word in you, this word is what's going to protect your mind. They got these, um, I'm pretty sure, I don't know if you uh, looked at that stuff that I've been posting up there about how they got these devices that uh, penetrate or come through your ear and you it makes you think you're hearing things inside your head. They making people think they're hearing the word of God. They they that's how these um, the guys that are going out. They trying to say they um, psychologically something wrong with them. That's not the case. These people are doing this kind of stuff, driving people to the point to where they going out and doing this kind of stuff, going into uh, movie theaters and shooting up the whole place, going into schools and killing children and all this kind of stuff. All this stuff exists, people. Okay. Do some research so you can find out for yourself what's going on. Because the stuff that's getting ready to come down the pipeline, you're going to have to know that you know that you know. Okay? Now, if God's word is not true, I'd rather know that I did all I could to live the way he said I should and to do the things that he did to try to help people come to him. I'd rather do all that and find out at the end of the day when the throne come down I have this going to go down that he come and tell me that, you know, I'm sorry, it's not true. I lied to you. Uh, I want to know, I'd rather know that I did all I could because he told me to, okay? I'd rather find out like that that it ain't real. But I can guarantee you that's not going to happen because God's word is the living word, okay? The only way we going to get to him is through Jesus Christ. Okay? Spend some time with him. Spend some time with him. You know, you know, once again, you know, I love you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. It's just a little something to know on. You know, it might not go down well for some people, but you know, you can't make everybody happy. A lot of these messages are for people that may be in leadership positions that have a grown cold or your flame is low you know who you are okay because we all the, the spirit operates as one okay it's one mind and one body we all are a part of the body of Christ it's time to get the, the bride ready for the groom because the day is approaching okay and with that being said um I shall return. Have a good one.